Now that we've got all our topography in place, let us cut some sections. I'm going to create a new layer on the line work layer and call it sections. All we need to do to get started is select our topography terrain, type in section, and begin drawing lines across the site. Now you may have a few things turned on in the bottom area of your Rhino options, so um, I'm just going to give you some suggestions. Number one, make sure you have some of these snaps turned on. End, near, mid, intersection, and perpendicular, all really useful to have as we're drawing lines on the site. Also, make sure your smart track is turned off. Smart track is, an, is a, a tool in Rhino that helps us match up different points by um, hovering over them and then matching them up in other places. But while we're drawing um, sections, it can get in the way a little bit. So I'm going to keep mine off. And then make sure your O snaps are on and that you're in planar. This makes sure that you're not accidentally drawing to different levels and heights while you're cutting these lines. I also have my gumball turned on. This is uh, something you'll see me use as I move the sections over. So we can select a start of section. You can just select anywhere on your site. So I'm gonna start cutting sections like this. You can keep going. If you wanna create a straight site section, you can make sure that perpendicular shows up when you uh, look for the other end of your section line. So I'm interested in these four different sections of my site and want to compare them to see how they might look. Um, one way we can do that is to just look at the other views that we have. So these sections, some of them are facing our right hand side, some of them are facing our front side. So if we look in these panels, we'll see a few of these lines begin to show up. But if we want to compare them all so that uh, we can look at all of them straight on, I would suggest that you make a copy and move them over and rotate them. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. The first thing we want to do is move all of these sections into our sections layer. To do that, we will right click on sections and go change object layer. Now, if we turn this on and off, we can see that the section lines appear or disappear. Next, I want to color code these. So as I copy them over, I might lose track of exactly which order they went in. So I'm going to use colors in the properties panel and you can change a display color by using this drop down menu here. Now, I don't love using these colors um, just because I enjoy my aesthetic experiences. So I'm going to choose a few other ranges of colors down here. Okay, now that I've color coded them, I'm going to select all of them and I'll use my gumball to copy them over by pressing down Alt and moving this X axis arrow. Now I can begin separating these out and rotating them so that they are horizontal to the plane. So I'll start with this one. I'm going to use the gumball again to move it. And I'll use the rotate command. Select my object and select a start and end point for the rotation. Now I can rotate it down and if I press shift it will constrain the direction. I'm going to keep it down here to zero degrees. Let's rotate all our sections first in this plane and then we'll think about rotating them 3D. You can also use the gumball to rotate this um, section around the X, or sorry, the Z axis. Um, you can just click and drag and it will rotate it down like this. OK, 
okay, we have four lines. How do we make them appear in their sectional form? What we're going to do is rotate these lines around the X axis. We're going to use the command rotate 3D. Select the first object and press enter. Select the starting point on the line, but select the next point while holding down shift and selecting a point beyond the line. The reason we do this is because, is that if we link up to this endpoint, and just look at this in front view, if we link up to this endpoint, you'll see that our, our rotation plane is angled, and that's gonna lead us to some funny rotations. So make sure you are parallel to the ground plane by pressing down shift and clicking your last point off of the line. Now we're gonna select a point in the front viewport that's above the line, and then above the line in top view. Now we have our section profile showing up correctly. Let's go through and rotate 3D the rest of the lines. So now we have all of our section profiles and we have the corresponding lines in Rhino. And I think that this should be um, a pretty good place for everyone to be in for Thursday to discuss with Paul and I.